Welcome back to The Shed. And welcome back to, um, well, a tale of being between two places. Um, we're not where we should be, and we weren't where we were. I hope that makes sense. Do you like cubes, squares, boxes even? Because today I have something that may interest you. It's a box, or more specifically, it's a box camera from Panasonic. It is, of course, the brand new BG-H1. Shall we see what's here? Let's have a little look in this box. What do you get with it? And more importantly, what is it supposed to actually do? I mean, don't we already have this camera in another way, GH5S? Well, what you get really is a cube, a lovely box camera. And the first thing I must say when you pull it out and have a look and have a little fiddle, is it's incredibly light. I think it's something like 514 grams or something ridiculous. You could put a magic arm or a little spigot in there and you could pop that anywhere you like without any trouble at all because it weighs nothing. It's a micro four thirds mount on the front. It's got mounting points top and the sides as you can see. And of course, because it's a box camera, you're going to have to put it in a cage almost immediately because you'll need to put things on it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually think we've grown to love cameras in this shape. This is surely the shape of the day. I mean, you've got the Komodo, you've got Zcam, and now of course you've got this. This is a popular shape. And there are some big advantages with this over the GH5S. Um, in that you can add things when you want to and not have them when you don't. And it's also got professional outputs, proper, proper outputs. If I turn that so you can see there, rejoice. We've got Genlock, we've got SDI out, and we've got time code. So you've got all of those here. You've also on this side got ethernet, which we'll come to in a second. Because I think this camera is almost a completely split personality camera, which can go one of two ways. And bear with me while I tell you what it could be. I think the first route is multicam. TV studios, um, places of worship, places of parties, places just with people in, because we miss those, don't we? But anywhere where you want a really fast multicam setup, you can power these all through one cable, control them all through your ethernet cable, and take the picture out all through that one cable. So that does open up some quite interesting possibilities with the Tether software. You can just have a laptop, and you can have up to 12 cameras, I believe, all controlled, and all that you can see through your laptop done through a router on, an, on the ethernet cables. So that's the first route. But the second route, of course, is the kind of indie cinema route where you take this little cube, you put a cage on, you could put your anamorphic glass on the front because it's got anamorphic modes. You could build it out with a battery or you could put your V-Lock adapter here or you could put your monitor, which you will need. Um, and you build yourself a very light, very adaptable little indie cinema camera. So those are the two roads. It's intriguing. I have to say it's lovely to hold. You've got a control dial on the top here. Um, you've got some buttons on the front here, function buttons, and some on the sides. The ones on the front could do with a more positive push. You know, I want to feel and click and know that I've actually done it because they're a bit light to touch. But apart from that, I really like it. You've got um, twin SDs on the side here, and it takes on the back a Panasonic video battery. Yes. Do you remember those? Yes. And here's here's one we had earlier, but something similar like that. Now, if you put something like this on it, which is obviously far too large, but for comedy purposes, you can see the green light is turned on. Because the power draw is so small on this, a battery of this size could probably run it all day. So there are advantages like that in terms of how you could power it and how you could rig it. I think it's really quite interesting. It opens up lots and lots of possibilities. It's fashionable, it's up to date, it's got length, so you can put you know, different um, controls on it. 
you've got your quick button, you've got your function button. You will need, as you may have noticed, to add some form of screen. Um, because if you look at it, there is no screen. I couldn't tell from just holding it in my hand what setting I was on, what frame rate, etc. So there are kind of two ways of skinning that cat. The first way is obviously to connect right, via HDMI or SDI uh, a monitor or an EVF. Uh, I would think an Atomos Shinobi or a small HD focus, something like that would be the kind of obvious choices. Uh, and that way you can control it there and you could mount it on the front. That's one way. Or the other way is you could even tether to your phone and have a little bracket for your phone here or just have a tablet and you could control the camera that way, do the settings, start, stop that way. Though obviously you do have a physical start, stop button here. It doesn't come with a battery. You literally get the camera, an AC lead, and that's about it. Um, so you have to think about how you want to rig it and how you want to use it. They supposedly got a stop more detail in the highlights um, with Vlog L. Um, so it has got a little bit more on the GH5S and it's meant to have the AF from the new S5 that's just been recently launched. So you're meant to have a better facial tracking AF. I have had a little play with the Tether software, which is lovely to see that work. And it's quite interesting with the face tracking AF because yes, you could rig this up remotely and it will pick up the face and it will move in and out. And that's something that some of the competitors don't have, which is face tracking AF. So it's not a camera for everybody, but it is a camera which has quite strong niche appeal, either remote studios, control of multicam, or of course, that indie cinema market that love to pimp their ride and to build whatever you want to build and to make the camera that you want, rather than being stuck as we have been sometimes in uh, photo bo bodies that are trying to be video cameras. This is an unashamed video box keeping up with the fashion of today, and it's quite an exciting offering from Panasonic.